uh, hi everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have discussed about uh, the database integration like we can actually integrate uh, nest.js with the type orm or sqlize or any other framework and any other library which indirectly will talk to uh, mysql postgres or a mongodb right so there is a orm layer which can be mongoose which can be sqlize which can be type orm and you will be talking to the different database so now what we just need is we just need our docker setup like docker compose and all these things we need to actually run the postgres container and then we can actually connect directly with our code so in our last video we created this uh, database module right this is the db module we have created we are passing all the connection options and we were calling this for root method from our domain module so this is our domain module we are doing database module dot for root passing all the entities and for feature now what is the next thing we have to do now is our database connection is working fine we are able to connect to the database everything is fine now we can start creating the entities entities means like uh, the database representation of our class right so what we will do is we'll go to a particular module and we will create all our entities so entities are nothing but a simple simple classes uh, and then we are already importing all the entities here right so those entities will be imported and you should be able to uh, trigger whatever you want on that particular entity okay so let's see that because when you are going to write an api you will be connecting to the database a lot of things you will do and you will be fetching reading writing from the database so here in the entities we can actually create user.ts this is the entity and we are reading this entity from our system from this uh, type of let's say we have this user entity a simple uh, simple set of columns okay i will just mark them as a public and all are required sorry okay so i have these many fields so what what we can do is this is the entity we have created now we can actually use our typo rm cli to do a lot of things after creating the entity there is there are two ways either you have the entity you can create the database table or you have the uh, entities you can also write a migrations and run the migration before like parallelly while you are starting the application so you always have the database table created i will just show you uh, how it is going to work so what we can do is we will go to the container okay so let me open a new terminal window for us so through this terminal we can actually get into inside the container and then we should be able to run the different set of commands okay so what we can do is new tab and uh, we'll go inside the container so we'll just use a docker ps command we are inside this container and now we can run few commands let's say npm run db sync so what this command will see do is it actually looks into your entities if the entities are already created then it will actually try to convert those entity into the database table right so here we have a different different command npm run db sync npm run migration generate npm run db create you can also create a database if you don't have and uh, you can actually generate a new migration and then you will write a code okay i want to create a table or alter a table through that uh, migration so it's connecting to the database and uh, currently let's uh, do npm run build i think it is not able to find the migration so migrations are if you just look into the code it is actually using orm.config.ts to run all these things and here we are looking into this migrations it is picking from src migration folder so if we see dist uh, so this is the thing we are not having the src folder so it is dist app okay let's modify this dist app migration 
all the entities are here that depends on the ts config file how you are actually how you are creating your dist folder currently i don't have a test cases i think that's why it has removed that parent src folder so i have a dist app all these folders this is my ORM config.ts so inside app you can see domain and let me run the build here so we have created the entities inside a domain folder right that is not there it means we have to trigger a build so we can run the build also so if we do the build here it is volume mount so whatever the code change we have done that should be available inside a container also otherwise we will keep this another tab open we will do npm run build and then the ts file will be transpiled and then we can do the npm run db sync npm run uh, migration generate all these commands so this orm config.ts is an important part because here we are defining all the things and this is my package.json inside package.json we have all these commands npm run uh, type orm type orm cli generate migration generate db sync even the so test case coverage we will see how to write all these things for now let's see if we, if we just go to our dist folder and we have entities okay we have everything now i think when we run db sync we should be able to say things don't need to go inside this let's come out and npm run db sync okay what are the other commands after this we can actually do a uh, migration generate and your migration file name okay so the new generated migration it will put inside src migrations folder in source we have migration folder we can create okay so this command is running let's wait for it and then we can uh, we can run all the other commands like migration generate uh, and we can just create a new migrations using this so after this after all these things happens like we have the table we have the, the entities created we have might have migration also created that's like how you want to do it what i do is i always create entities and do npm run db sync it will create the entity then i copy this sequels and use the same sql while creating the while writing the migration queries i mean that helps like you, you will not end up doing the mismatch of the columns and types okay now inside if you see the domain here you can add your controllers and your services so here you will add user controller.ts here you will write your user routes and inside service we can create user service.ts now this user service will talk to the user repository the user repository is nothing but the representation of the the user table using type orm because with the help of that you should be able to call all these uh, different methods like find one find all find by id and delete which type orm provides i mean particularly any orm provides because orms are the way to provide you these interface and then you can call a particular method to access things okay so if we just see okay database synchronization done it has created a table so this is what we want now we can write a service first and then after once service is done then service will be a simple like you just writing injectable i can use existing table I, I, I can use existing uh, template for writing this user service 
okay we are going to define the methods and here inside a constructor you will be injecting a model you will be injecting a particular repository okay so that we will do so here we can use some existing template to write our service so it should be injectable service and we can simply create export default class user service and here we will write constructor inside constructor we will do the dependency injection of repository right so i will just add this and then i will explain what we are doing here so we will be adding the dependency injection of that repository our repository is user i mean the table and the type is user and this is user repo we have right now what it will do is it will just provide us a way to query the database table okay we just need to import all these things we have inject repositories injectable and all from typo rm and now we can just add all, all our helper methods so this user is an entity we have created if it is a different name we will import that okay it's just a user only so we can import we can add this we can add user Let, let's we'll add these later now we can actually create the methods okay like create update delete i will not go into the deep but just providing you a way like how we are doing it public async let's say create simple we might be getting some data and then here you will put a try catch block and inside this try catch you will be writing your actual operation okay so inside this what we are doing is uh, we will be creating a user const user equal to okay and then you can set all the attributes or you can also pass all the parameters here like this user dot set something like this so we created a user object now user dot name all the properties we wanted to define you can do the dependency injection of any particular table address uh, shopping cart product and anything and you can access that entity and you will write the different different method this is a service similarly you will write a controller for these and controllers will call the service methods you will create the entity update delete you will be doing a join you will be writing a query builder all these things you can do here okay so this is pretty much about uh, this particular section where we are talking about the the nest js and type rm so this is actually second part of the whole series first is a ba ba basic building blocks Second is understanding NestJS with the typo RM, maybe SQLize, Mongoose, you can explore, but this is how it, it works. I will commit this code so you can also spin up this, the whole setup using Docker and can see how it is running. And we have this nice CLI, so you can actually run the, uh, run the migrations, you can create the new migrations, you can actually do the db sync, so it will create the database tables for you. Okay, uh, thanks everyone.